My take on the top 10 hardest champions. Now, there are currently 10 different champions, depending on who you count. So, I decided to rank them from easiest to hardest. Or from hardest to easiest, depending on how you look at it. What I'm trying to say is that I'll start with the easiest and go to the hardest. Quick note before we start, everything in this video is purely factual because I said it. If you disagree, you're completely wrong and should be ashamed of your objectively bad opinion. Without further ado, here are the top 10 hardest champions in Pokemon. Number 10, Diantha. If you never played X and Y, you might ask why I'm rating Diantha as the easiest champion in Pokemon, seeing as she has the highest level team of any champion pre-rematch, is one of three champions to use Mega Evolution, and has a pseudo-legendary on her team in the form of Gudra. Well, let me answer your observations in the reverse order of how I presented them. Diantha may have a pseudo-legendary on her team, but then again, sort of the majority of champions. So that doesn't win her too many points in my book. She may use Mega Evolutions, but early in the game, you receive a free Mega Lucario, a Steel type, therefore strong against Diantha's Mega Gardevoir. Diantha may have the highest level team of any champion, but here's the main reason I rate her the easiest champion in Pokemon. The XP share. In X and Y, the XP share was changed from a held item that gave the holder experience, even when they didn't participate in the battle, to a key item that gave your entire team experience from every battle you won. Was the level curve steeper to accommodate? No. No, it wasn't. Number 9. Alder. The thing about Alder is that none of his Pokemon are seriously threatening. Besides, half his team is weak to fire, and another half to rock. Sure, he has a dragon, which is a hard type to deal with in Gen 5. But it's not impossible. Another thing I want to mention is that he isn't fought until the post-game, which instantly makes him less threatening because of all the post-game areas you get to explore and train in before fighting him. His fight is like a rematch. Number 8. Wallace. You might be saying, or why are you rating Wallace so low? That Milo take is pretty tough. And yeah, you'd be right. What can I say? The only reason I'm putting him so low is that the rest of the champions are even tougher than him. I really hope I have more to say about the rest of the entries. Because, damn, these last two have been pretty dull. Number 7, Trace. Trace doesn't really have anything too unique about him. He only got beyond Alder by the fact he uses Mega Evolution, and beyond Wallace by using a diverse team with no overlapping types. The reason Trace is so low is that his Pokemon's movesets are pretty bad. His Vile Plume knows Solar Beam without any way to set up Sunlight. His Starter knows Thunder, a not very accurate move, Quick Attack, a weak move, and another one of the above. And worst of all, each of his Pokemon only know three moves! What kind of champion has only three moves on his Mon? Number six! Leon. Honestly, Leon's pretty tough. He has an Aegislash, which is pretty good if used correctly, a Haxorus, which is always threatening, two starters, which are designed to be good, and a pseudo-legendary, which I didn't give Diantha too many points for, but Leon is in a game with a more suitable level curve for the XP share. Leon's Pokemon also have decent moves, 
Nothing too out of the ordinary, but nothing particularly bad either. So, why isn't he in the top 5? That's just because he doesn't have anything to push him over the edge of being really tough. You'll see what I mean when I talk about the actual top 5. Speaking of... Number 5! Iris. Just like Leon, she has Pokemon with really high stats, and she even puts items on a few of her Pokemon. But I said with Leon that all the top 5 have something pushing them over the edge. What does that mean for Iris? Well, her Haxorus knows the D-Dance and holds a Sash. You can't get away from that. That's one heck of a combo. In my last playthrough of White 2, I barely beat that Haxorus despite using Taunt because even without D-Dance, it's still really fast, so it managed to pull off a D-Dance before I used Taunt. I could talk about how her team is unbalanced and shares too many weaknesses around it, but if you think it can bring one or two counters to a team and come out with an easy win, you got another thing coming. Also, her Dredigan holds a life orb, which isn't fair. Number 4, Lance. Lance is this high on the list for one reason and one reason only. Well, I guess that's three reasons. Dude has three pseudo-legendaries! Sure, all three are Dragonite, but three pseudo-legendaries is still really hard to deal with. They also each have a very powerful move in Blizzard, Fire Blast, and Thunder. This Dragon-type specialist only has one flaw. All of his Pokémon share a type. That being dra flying. That means they all share a weakness to rock. Luckily for him, he has a Gyarados, so don't get too comfortable with using rock types. Number 3. Blue. Blue consistently uses a diverse team of very good Pokemon. His usual team includes a Pidgeot, a Rhydon, and a Firewater Grass Core. His team in yellow includes a Sandslash, which is a bit of a downgrade, Executorb, which is also on his usual team unless you pick Squirtle, and a Firewater Electric Core. The only Pokemon on every single one of his champion teams is... Alakazam. Alakazam is a pure Psychic type, the best type in Gen 1, and also in Fire Red and Leaf Green. There are multiple reasons why, but the main two I want to talk about are good stats and bad weaknesses. In Gen 1, there were only 5 stats as opposed to the usual 6 you're familiar with, because special attack and special defense were one and the same, meaning Alakazam had not only extremely high special attack, but also extremely high special defense. But that doesn't apply to Fire and Leaf Green, does it? So, what does? Psychic is weak to Dark, Ghost, and Bug. However, there aren't any Dark types in Kanto, so that's irrelevant. The only Ghost in Kanto is Gengar, a Poison type, plus Psychic isn't weak to Ghost in Gen 1. And so, we're only left with Bug. There were no good Bug moves in Gen 1. Moving on to Fire and Leaf Green, there are three good Bug moves. Silver Wind, Signal Beam, and Mega Horn. Silver Wind is learned by Butterfree, a bad Pokemon, and Venomoth, a poison type. Signal Beam is learned by only Dugong at level 1, with move reminders on the Sevi Islands. Mega Horn is learned by Nido King, a poison type, seeking at level 69, which is higher than you'd normally reach, and Rhydon. So you're basically stuck with Rhydon. So if A, you don't want to use Rhydon, B, your Rhydon is fainted, C, your Rhydon doesn't know Megahorn, or D, Megahorn misses, <laughs> you're pretty much doomed. Okay, guys, uh, while looking at this section after finishing the video, I just realized that, uh, my last part of, like, my last point on blue was kind of dumb. Uh, what my point should have been is that 
uh, the only stab bug moves you can get in Gen 1, or in Fire Red and Leaf Green, are, uh, is Silver Wind, which is only learned by Butterfree and Venomoth, who is a poison type, and, of course, Butterfree is really bad. It, it was a pretty dumb move. Uh, it was a pretty bad point, is what I'm trying to say. Number two, Steven. Steven just has a really tough team, with the spotlight definitely being his Metagross. His Pokemon also cover each other's weaknesses surprisingly well for a team with so many overlapping types. Wanna bring a Fighting type? He has a Metagross. Wanna bring a Fire type? He has three Rock types and a Ground type. Wanna bring a Grass type? He has a Skarmory. Wanna bring a Water type? He has a Cradilly. You get the point. Another thing is how much higher level his Pokemon are than the ones in Victory Road. The highest level Pokemon in Victory Road are level 40. His lowest is 55. How are you supposed to reach his level? Oh, and in ORS, his Metagross Mega Evolves. He has a Mega Evolving Pseudo Legendary. It would literally be easier to beat if he had a Box Art Legendary. Why did they think it was a good idea to give Steven a Mega Evolving Pseudo Legendary? They could have given him a Mega Agron. Oh no. She's next. Number one. You have three guesses. And the last two don't count. Yep, yeah, we all knew it was going to be Cynthia. But the most common answer to a question is often the right one. Cynthia has a very diverse team of very good Pokemon. This is starting to feel like my catchphrase for this video, but it's true for Cynthia. She has multiple serious threats on her team. Spiritomb has no weaknesses. Milo knows Aqua Ring and Diamond and Pearl. Togekiss with Aura Sphere is annoying as hell. And Lucario pulls Psychic out of nowhere in Diamond and Pearl. But, we all know what's the biggest threat on our team. That Garchomp. Dragon Rush refuses to miss. Earthquake is one of the best moves in the game. And either Brick Break or Flamethrower for Ice types. It's honestly a blessing when it uses Giga Impact, because then you have a free turn without this devilish monster attacking you. Oh, and if you think fairy types will ruin the challenge in BDSP, think again. She has a Lucario and a Rose Raid. Plus her Gastrodon and Diamond and Pearl knows Sludge Bomb. Also, they could easily give Garchomp Iron Head. Real quick, before we finish this video, let's look at a few of the bloopers I made. Alder. The thing is about Alder... Is that uh, it's the thing is about his older is his older is, is yeah uh, is he has an Aegis Slash which, which is which which is a hack search a hack search and a pseudo legendary which I didn't give Tiantha Tiantha Lance Lance is this high on the least on the least least sure. All three are Dragonite, but three L Ludo Legendaries. Ludo Legendaries! Starver's the Forces of Evil Watch? The only Pokemon in every single one of his electric teams- Electric teams? I meant champion teams, not electric teams! What? Where did that come from? Psychic is weak to rock- It's not weak to rock. If you like this video, you should press- every button down below, including the thumbs up button. That's not a thumb, but you should still press the thumbs up button. And the recommended videos uh, uh, buttons, if they're my videos. And if you like them, uh, also the subscribe button. Those are three very important buttons to press. If you pressed all three, maybe just maybe throwing it out there, you should follow me on Twitter. At the Aura Charmander. Not at the Aura Charmander. At Aura underscore Charmander. Sorry, my bad. 
Uh, link, obviously, in the description. Where else would the link be? Yeah, that's all I have for now. So, keep eating chocolate, and may the Charmander be with you.